September 8, 2025. In the frigid depths of the Norwegian Sea, 240 nautical miles northwest of Tromsø, the ocean was about to witness the detonation of the most powerful weapon ever deployed underwater. Russia's Status-6 Poseidon Torpedo, a 65-foot nuclear-powered doomsday weapon carrying a 100-megaton thermonuclear warhead, had been stalking NATO's largest naval exercise in decades. For 72 hours, the autonomous torpedo had remained undetected at depths exceeding 3,000 feet, its nuclear reactor providing unlimited range, while its AI guidance system tracked the movements of 47 NATO warships worth $89 billion. But at 1347 hours, when the torpedo's proximity sensors detected the USS Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group directly above, 14 seconds of underwater nuclear detonation would create the largest man-made explosion in maritime history. What started as NATO's exercise Trident Fury would end with the most catastrophic naval disaster since World War II, as a single weapon would demonstrate Russia's ability to destroy entire fleets with technology the West barely understood. How did one torpedo threaten an entire NATO fleet? What made the underwater explosion so devastating? Join me in discovering the truth behind 14 seconds that changed naval warfare forever. September 5th, 2025, 0800 hours. Exercise Trident Fury represented NATO's largest naval demonstration of force since the Cold War. 47 warships from 12 nations had assembled in the Norwegian Sea to conduct advanced warfare training and send a clear message to Moscow about Alliance naval superiority. The centerpiece was the USS Gerald R. Ford, America's newest and most advanced aircraft carrier, worth $13.3 billion and carrying 75 F-35C Lightning II fighters. Supporting the Ford were two Ticonderoga-class cruisers, six Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, and two Virginia-class attack submarines, representing $47 billion in American naval power. Allied contributions included the Royal Navy's HMS Queen Elizabeth, France's Charles de Gaulle nuclear carrier, Germany's newest Type 212 CD submarines, and Norway's advanced Fridtjof Nansen-class frigates. The combined firepower exceeded 2,000 missiles, 400 aircraft, and defensive systems worth $89 billion. Unknown to NATO commanders, Russian President Vladimir Putin had authorized the deployment of Russia's most classified weapon system. The Status-6 Poseidon represented a $4.7 billion investment in strategic deterrence technology, a 65-foot nuclear-powered torpedo with a 100-megaton thermonuclear warhead designed to create radioactive tsunamis. September 3, 2025, 0430 hours. The nuclear submarine Belgorod, Russia's largest and most secretive underwater vessel, approached the launch position 400 nautical miles from the NATO exercise area. At 608 feet long and displacing 30,000 tons, Belgorod was specifically designed to carry and deploy Status-6 Poseidon torpedoes. Captain First Rank Dmitry Volkov commanded the Belgorod and his crew of 139. Weapons Officer, Captain Volkov commanded, prepare Poseidon Unit 3 for deployment. Target coordinates are NATO Exercise Trident Fury, authorization code ZAR-77. 0445 hours, the massive torpedo ejected from Belgorod's launch tube. Its nuclear reactor activated automatically, bringing the weapon's propulsion system online while advanced sonar arrays began mapping the surrounding ocean environment. The Poseidon's nuclear propulsion system could maintain speeds of 70 knots underwater, faster than any NATO torpedo or anti-submarine weapon. September 5, 2025, 0800 hours. Admiral Mike Mitchell, commanding Exercise Trident Fury from the USS Gerald R. Ford, watched as 47 NATO warships maneuvered in perfect formation across 200 square miles of Norwegian Sea. The Ford's E-2D advanced Hawkeye aircraft launched to provide airborne early warning coverage, their powerful radars scanning for threats out to 400 nautical miles. Below the surface, NATO submarines took up screening positions designed to detect and engage any hostile underwater contacts. But the Poseidon torpedo was operating at depths and using technology that NATO's anti-submarine warfare systems were never designed to counter. Its nuclear reactor provided a completely different acoustic signature than conventional submarines, while its AI guidance system allowed it to avoid detection patterns. If you were commanding the NATO 
fleet, would you deploy additional submarine patrols or focus on surface threats? Tell me in the comments. September 6, 2025, 1200 hours. The Poseidon had reached the outer edge of the NATO exercise area and began its surveillance phase. Advanced sonar arrays painted a detailed picture of the fleet's composition and movement patterns. The Torpedo's AI system, developed over eight years at a cost of $890 million, analyzed each contact with precision that exceeded human capability. It identified the USS Gerald R. Ford by her unique acoustic signature and calculated optimal attack positions for maximum destructive effect. For 48 hours, the weapon remained undetected while gathering intelligence on NATO tactics and defensive procedures. Lieutenant Commander Jessica Torres, the Ford's anti-submarine warfare officer, monitored her sonar displays with growing unease. Something's not right, she reported. We're getting intermittent contacts that don't match any known submarine profiles. The contacts appeared and disappeared at random intervals, always at extreme depth and moving at impossible speeds. NATO's sonar operators attributed the readings to thermal layers or equipment malfunctions, unaware they were detecting history's most advanced autonomous weapon. September 8, 2025, 1330 hours. The Poseidon's AI system determined that optimal attack conditions had been achieved. The NATO fleet was conducting a coordinated anti-submarine exercise with ships arranged in a defensive formation that would maximize casualties from a single nuclear detonation. The torpedo began its final approach from 4,000 feet depth, rising slowly toward the optimal detonation depth of 1,500 feet directly beneath the USS Gerald R. Ford. Captain Robert Hayes, commanding the Ford, was reviewing exercise reports when his ship's most advanced sonar system finally detected the approaching threat. The AN-SQR-20 multifunction towed array painted a contact unlike anything in its database. Captain to Combat Information Center, Hayes announced. What's the classification on that deep contact bearing 270? Sonar technician First Class Marcus Johnson studied his display with growing alarm. Captain, contact is extremely large, moving at 65 knots at depth, 2,000 feet, and rising. I've never seen anything like this. 1,345 hours. The Ford's combat systems identified the contact as a probable torpedo, but its size and speed characteristics exceeded all known weapon systems. Emergency alarms began sounding throughout the carrier. All stations, all stations, Captain Hayes broadcast to the entire fleet. Torpedo in the water. All ships take evasive action. Deploy countermeasures immediately. But there were no countermeasures effective against a 100-ton nuclear-powered torpedo carrying a thermonuclear warhead. Before you discover what happens next, please support us by liking and subscribing to the channel. September 8, 2025, 1347 hours. The Poseidon's proximity sensors detected the USS Gerald R. Ford's massive hull directly above and triggered the detonation sequence. For 14 seconds, the ocean became the site of the largest underwater nuclear explosion in human history. The 100-megaton thermonuclear warhead detonated 1,500 feet beneath the NATO fleet with the force of 6,700 Hiroshima bombs. The initial fireball, reaching temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius, vaporized millions of tons of seawater instantly, creating a cavitation bubble nearly two miles in diameter. The USS Gerald R. Ford, directly above the detonation point, was lifted completely out of the water by the expanding bubble of superheated steam. The 100,000-ton aircraft carrier, along with her 4,500 crew members and 75 aircraft worth $8.7 billion, disintegrated in the initial shockwave. Ships within five nautical miles experienced catastrophic structural damage as pressure waves exceeding 10,000 pounds per square inch crushed their hulls. HMS Queen Elizabeth, positioned three nautical miles from the Ford, suffered complete hull failure and broke in half, sinking within four minutes with 679 crew members and 24 F-35B fighters worth $2.8 billion. The French carrier Charles de Gaulle, at 4.2 nautical miles from the explosion, experienced severe flooding as the pressure wave buckled her hull plating. The nuclear-powered carrier sank 23 minutes after the detonation, 1,348 hours. 
the explosion's effects continued expanding as massive water displacement created artificial tsunamis radiating in all directions. Ships at distances up to 15 nautical miles experienced severe damage from waves exceeding 200 feet in height. The USS Leyte Gulf, a Ticonderoga-class cruiser positioned seven nautical miles from the detonation, was struck by a 180-foot wave that rolled the 9,600-ton warship completely over, destroying her $400 million Aegis combat system and killing her crew of 387 sailors. German Type II, 12 CD submarines were crushed by pressure waves that exceeded their hull design limits. Norwegian frigates proved helpless against the unprecedented destructive forces, overwhelmed by successive tsunami waves. The radioactive contamination spread rapidly through the water column, creating a dead zone extending 50 nautical miles from the detonation point with radiation levels exceeding 10,000 Roentgens per hour. 1,400 hours. Seismic monitoring stations across Europe detected the underwater explosion as a magnitude 6.2 earthquake. The detonation's energy release created shockwaves that traveled through the Earth's crust and were recorded 3,000 miles away. Emergency sessions convened in Washington, London, Paris, Berlin, and 23 other NATO capitals. The loss of three aircraft carriers, multiple escort vessels, and over 12,000 naval personnel represented the worst military disaster in NATO's history. President Trump's response was immediate. The United States has suffered an unprovoked nuclear attack on our naval forces. We will respond with the full force of our nuclear arsenal unless Russia immediately ceases all hostile actions. The nuclear threat sent shockwaves through global financial markets as the world stood on the brink of thermonuclear war. 1800 hours. Of the 47 NATO warships that had participated in Exercise Trident Fury, only 23 remained afloat most severely damaged. The human cost was staggering, 12,847 NATO personnel killed or missing. The financial cost exceeded $89 billion in destroyed vessels and equipment. Russia had demonstrated a weapon system that could destroy entire naval formations with a single torpedo, fundamentally altering the balance of naval power worldwide. Traditional concepts of fleet defense became obsolete in the face of autonomous nuclear weapons. The Poseidon torpedo attack on NATO's Exercise Trident Fury marked the beginning of a new era in naval warfare. A single autonomous weapon had demonstrated the ability to eliminate entire fleets, rendering traditional naval tactics obsolete. The underwater explosion felt worldwide proved that Russia possessed strategic weapons capable of neutralizing NATO's conventional advantages. The 14 seconds of nuclear detonation beneath the Norwegian Sea changed naval warfare forever proving that even the most powerful fleets were vulnerable to weapons that operated beyond traditional military engagement. The age of human-controlled naval warfare was ending, replaced by artificial intelligence systems that could destroy civilizations with computer precision. If you found this analysis compelling, don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth military coverage. Like this video to support the channel and share it so more people can understand the truth behind the headlines. The future of naval warfare has arrived, and it's more terrifying than anyone imagined.